This is Story Recap. Today I'm going to explain an action, adventure, and sci-fi film called John Carter. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The planet called Barsoom slowly dies as the city of Zodanga drains its life. Only the city of Helium resists as they corner Zodanga airships in a sandstorm. They attack the enemy so the Zodanga ruler Sab Than navigates above the sandstorm to fire at them. However, another Helium ship hovers above and deplores warriors, sparking a battle. Suddenly, a mysterious blue light vaporizes everyone except Sab Than. The Therns arrive, and their leader Matai Shang gives Sab Than a weapon. Sab Than smirks and turns the weapon against them, but they deflect the attack. He claims that their goddess chose Sab Than, and if he complies, he'll rule over Barsoom. In New York City in 1881, John Carter misdirects a pursuer before sending a letter to summon his nephew Edgar. Unbeknownst to him, a man still watches him. Edgar soon arrives in New York and learns his uncle has passed. At John's estate, his attorney Noah Dalton shares that John's death was a surprise because he was healthy. Before John died, he relented he searched for something all across the world. Edgar shares that his mother thought John never truly returned from the war, though Edgar was fond of the stories he told when he was young. Noah takes Edgar to John's mausoleum which can only be opened from the inside. Noah explains that John didn't want his body embalmed or have a funeral. In John's will, he leaves his estate, wealth, and private journal to Edgar. After Noah leaves, Edgar sits back, overwhelmed by the events. He then reads the journal where John asks him to believe his stories again. In 1868 in Arizona, John enters a bar. Mr. Dix, the barkeeper, scolds John for not paying his tab. John promises to pay since he has a lead on the cave, but Mr. Dix cuts him off. A bar patron tells the barkeeper to pay respects to John's supposed evil spider cave of gold. He's asked to leave and the men surround him, but John beats them. He throws a small gold bar to Mr. Dix for the unpaid tab and asks for beans. Suddenly, soldiers arrive to fetch John. He charges at them, but a man knocks him out. When John wakes up, he meets Colonel Powell. John immediately hits him to escape, but is caught. As Powell notes John's achievement in the war, John jumps out the window but is caught again and thrown into a cell. Finally, Powell recruits John for the ongoing fight with the Apache, but John refuses claiming he has already paid his debt to the country in full. John then plots to escape and become rich enough to buy Powell, so Powell punches him and threatens his life if he doesn't comply. John dreams of a woman calling him to supper before waking up. He pees outside the cell to provoke the guard, allowing him to knock him out and escape. Powell and his men chase after John but stop upon meeting an Apache group. John negotiates with the natives but a soldier shoots, starting a battle. John escapes but sees Powell get hit, so he returns to save him. The two hide in a cave but the Apache corners them. However, they retreat upon seeing a spider symbol above the cave. John enters the cave and sees strange symbols that don't seem to belong to the Apache. Above him, John finds the gold he'd been searching for. Suddenly, a third materializes behind John, wielding a knife. Powell warns John, allowing him to dodge. The third pushes John and grabs his knife, but John shoots him. The dying man chants while holding a medallion. John hears him say Barsoom and copies him as he takes the medallion. Suddenly, blue light flashes from the medallion. John wakes up in the desert. He tries to walk, but ends up floating and falling on his stomach. After several failed attempts, John throws a rock that rockets away. Realizing he's stronger and can jump higher, he skips away, but drops the medallion. Soon, John hears cracking noises and follows them to a structure where he finds hatching alien eggs. Nearby, a creature picks up the medallion. John spots a group heading his way. Suddenly, a creature attacks him, but he jumps away and hides. Seeing this, the creature orders his warriors to stop shooting. He drops his weapons and, in an alien language, introduces himself as Tars Tarkas, chief of the Tharks. John sees the weapons on the ground and introduces himself, adding that he's from Virginia. Tars mistakes Virginia as his name. He asks John to jump, so he does, but lands to take Tars' gun. However, he gets shot by another Thark. The Tharks take him and the hatchlings while killing the unhatched eggs they deem weak. In Helium, Dejah Thoris practices her presentation. When the Royal Council enters to discuss the situation with Zodanga, Admiral Kanto's can reveals the eastern border is destroyed, and their last squad is defeated. Hopeless, Tardos declares Helium has lost. Deja disagrees and shows her machine, capable of utilizing the unlimited energy of the Ninth Ray. She explains that Sab Than only uses it for slaughter, but they can use it to revitalize Barsu. While the council marvels at the machine, one man touches it and secretly destroys it. Tardos dismisses everyone to talk to Deja privately. Tardos tells Deja she must marry Sab Than to save Helium. Deja refuses, but Tardos argues there's no other way. Kanto's Khan returns to announce Sab Than's arrival. Meanwhile, the man who destroyed Deja's machine hides and shapeshifts into a thern. He tells Matai Shang that Deja almost discovered the Ninth Ray, but with the machine destroyed, the plan proceeds. Elsewhere, John is taken to the city of Tharks, where the women fight over the hatchlings. Sola takes a hatchling but is beaten by Sarkoja. Tars orders Sarkoja to let Sola have one, but Sarkoja gives John to Sola instead. While Sola frees him from his shackles, John sees the burn marks on her body. John spots the medallion hanging from a Thark and goes after it, but Tal Hages stops him. Tars intervenes, so an offended Tal challenges 
challenges him. Without support, however, the challenge is denied. Tars presents John to his people, then asks him to jump. However, John refuses, so he is taken away while Tars collects the medallion. John is cleaned along with the hatchlings. At night, Sola feeds him a liquid called Voice of Barsoom, making John delirious. When the hatchlings are asleep, a creature appears to sleep among them. John escapes from his shackles, then leaps away, but the creature suddenly appears. Soon, John sneaks up on the Tharks to retrieve the medallion, but the creature follows him. The Tharks beat the creature, so John protects it and kills one of the Tharks with a punch. Tars is shocked by this, while John is surprised he can understand Tars. The Tharks knock him out while Sola arrives for the creature, Wula, leading to the Tharks blaming her for John's escape. John dreams of a child and a woman weirdly watching him leave. He wakes up chained next. Sola is branded and Tars warns that her next offense means death. Tars orders John to jump again, but a Thark warns him of incoming ships. Sab Than and his ships chase after the helium ship. He prepares to shoot down the helium ship, but Matai Shang stops him because they need Deja alive. Instead, Sab Than brings the ship down. He captures the soldiers but doesn't find Deja. She appears out of hiding and takes control of their ship, but crashes and gets thrown out. John sees her from afar and jumps to catch her, gaining Sab Than's and Matai Shang's attention. John fights to protect Deja, but after seeing her fight, he realizes it was unnecessary. John leaps towards a Zodanga ship, which he hijacks to shoot another. Matai Shang wants John alive, so Sab Than challenges John and beats him. However, the Tharks shoot them, allowing John to escape. Sab Than retreats and the Tharks rejoice. Impressed with John's abilities, Deja surrenders to the Tharks. Tars honors John by giving him his breastplate and offers Deja as his prize. Deja warns Tars that Zodanga will conquer them too, but Tars thinks she wants John as a weapon, so he asserts that John fights for them. John argues that he fights for nobody, but Tars threatens Deja, so he reluctantly complies. The Tharks loot the destroyed ships while Deja mourns for the fallen Heliumites. John comments that war is shameful, but Deja disagrees if it's for a noble cause. John asks how their ships can fly since he only knows about ships that sail on seas. She calls him a liar because there are no seas on the planet. The two discuss the planets and they conclude John is from Earth while Barsoom, where he is now, is Mars. John asserts the medallion brought him there, so Deja thinks he's a Thern. Deja takes John to the Thark's forbidden temple despite Sola's protests. Inside, Sola explains that Therns are messengers of the goddess Isis. John and Deja learn of the Gates of East, where they believe John may find answers. Deja promises to take John there if he gets them out. However, the Tharks capture them. The three are sentenced to death. Tars blames John for endangering Sola, leading John to believe she's his daughter. Tars confirms this secretly, so John argues he can't let her die. Tars takes him to a tent where he frees them and returns the medallion as long as they take Sola. Later, Tal checks the tent but finds it empty, concluding that Tars betrayed them. While the group travels to find the River East, Matai Shang convinces a reluctant Sab Than that the marriage will cement his reign. Soon, Sola suspects Deja is misleading them, so John confronts her. Deja confesses to leading them to Helium in hopes of convincing John to fight for them. Betrayed, John and Sola leave, so Deja reveals she escaped because she cannot marry Sab Than. In trying to chase them, Deja trips, making John return to her. Deja begs him, saying that the Gates of East aren't real, but John disagrees since the medallion is real. Soon, Matai Shang receives news that John is approaching the Gates of East, so he teleports there. The group reaches the River East, and Sola decides to venture alone to redeem herself. John convinces her otherwise by telling her that Tars is her father. They ride through the river and reach a strange structure. John and Deja jump over it and John's medallion opens the entrance. As they enter, they see blue light spreading, leading Deja to realize that it's a machine, not a work of God. John's medallion triggers a spider-like pattern composed of nine lines. Deja realizes the ninth ray is real and is powering the structure. She concludes that the therns are real and gave Zodanga the ninth ray. This also convinces her that John is truly from Earth. Suddenly, the light shows the solar system. When John steps on Earth's symbol, writings appear. Deja hypothesizes that John's body on Mars is a copy of his body on Earth. Deja claims she needs her materials in Helium to decipher the writings, but John thinks she's tricking him. John wants to return to his gold, but Deja thinks he's not being honest with himself. They kiss, but John jerks away after recalling his family. Suddenly, Sola warns them about an army of Warhoons. Matai Shang orders the Warhoons to chase them. They ride away, but the army gets closer. John recalls finding his house burnt down, so he stays behind to let Deja and Sola escape. Deja protests as Sola takes her away. Wula stays with him as the army approaches. John remembers finding his family's remains, enraging him. John launches himself towards the Horde. As he fights, he remembers burying his own family. John stands on a pile of dead Warhoons until he's overwhelmed. A helium ship arrives and shoots the Warhoons, scattering them. Tardos reunites with Deja, who digs John from the pile and finds him alive. Sab Than arrives to offer John medical assistance, but Deja pulls a gun on him. Tardos stops her, claiming that Sab Than came with them out of concern for her. Sab Than reminds her that Zodanga and Helium will unite if they marry, so Deja goes with them, leaving Sola and Wula behind. Soon, John wakes up in Zodanga. Kanto's Khan enters the room and loudly claims that John is dangerous while whispering for 
for John to take him hostage. John is confused, so Kanto's Khan pulls the sword and pretends to be a hostage to escape. They escape through the roof where Kanto's Khan tells John to leap to a distant tower. John doubts he can make the jump, but when the guards arrive, he does it anyway. They reach Deja's room where she's preparing for her wedding. After thanking Kanto's Khan for bringing him, Deja asks to be alone with John. John asserts that Deja can't marry, so she asks for his help again. John hesitates, so Deja returns his medallion and teaches him how to return to Earth. When Sabthan enters the room, John is gone. Deja thinks he's returned to Earth, but as they leave the room, John watches from the ceiling. When John exits, a disguised Matai Shang takes him. John wakes up in a vehicle and Matai Shang guesses where he came from, as he's aware of America. He deduces that John's ability is due to the difference in gravity between Mars and Earth. In another disguise, Matai Shang controls John with a device on his wrist. He shows John the wedding parade and explains that because Deja discovered the Ninth Ray, she must perish. Matai Shang asserts that the Ninth Ray must remain with people they can control like Sab Than. Deja's death will ensure Zodanga's reign and lead to Barsoom's demise. Matai Shang claims that they've been manipulating the planetary destructions to feed on them since time immemorial. As Matai Shang prepares to transport John to prison, Wula arrives and bites Matai Shang's device, allowing John to take the medallion and escape on a flyer. The guards chase him, but John directs them to crash on the city's moving legs while Sola shoots down the last pursuer. They regroup, and John thanks them for saving him. John prepares his flyer and tells Sola to get on, but she's reluctant as Tharks don't fly. Still, the three crash into the city of Tharks, only to learn that Tal is now the chieftain. The Tharks send John to prison where he finds a beaten up Tars. They are taken into the arena where John is chained to a stone. The Tharks release a giant ape, and due to Tars' injuries, they get hit. In the audience, Sola calls out to her father, and Sarkoja overhears this. John distracts the ape from Tars and leaps over it. He tries to remove the chain from the stone, so Tal orders to release another ape. The other ape approaches Tars. Sarkoja taunts Sola, but she retaliates and drops them both into the arena. An ape rips Sarkoja apart while Sola protects Tars. The ape accidentally wraps itself with John's chain and frees it from the stone. John spins the chain with a stone and whips it against the ape, killing it. The other ape chases after Sola and Tars. Sola throws her sword for John to catch. He rips the ape's body from underneath and the crowd cheers. John challenges Tal and the crowd supports him. Tal jumps to attack, but John beheads him. Victorious, John convinces the Tharks to ride for Zodanga. John and the Tharks' army enter Zodanga. However, they learn that the wedding is in Helium. John tries to convince Tars to fly so they can reach Helium in time, but Tars refuses. Alone, John flies over Helium and sees the Zodanga army outside. He crashes the wedding to warn everyone, so Matai Shang signals Sab Than. Sab Than grabs Deja and signals the army to attack. Deja stabs his hand to release herself while John catches her. Deja retrieves a sword and fights while Sab Than fights John. He dominates the fight with a ninth ray. However, a ship crashes in. Tharks emerge from the ship to fight on Helium's side. As Sab Than is distracted, John stabs him in the leg and severs his arm. John asks Sab Than about the therns, but Matai Shang controls the ninth ray weapon to kill him. The weapon also chokes John, but Deja attacks Matai Shang, saving him. Matai Shang shapeshifts into Deja and they fight. When John reaches them, Matai Shang holds Deja at knife point, plotting to replace her and sabotage her discovery of the ninth ray. Deja steals his medallion, which John throws. Tars picks it up and hands it to John, only to realize that it's Matai Shang in disguise, who disappears before they attack. Finally, Zodanga surrenders and John proposes to Deja, which she accepts. The two are wed that evening. Later, Deja finds an uneasy John on the balcony, though he promises to return to their bed soon. Afterward, John throws away the medallion, deciding that he belongs on Mars now. However, a guard suddenly shapeshifts into Matai Shang and returns John to Earth. John wakes up in the cave and desperately tries to return without the medallion but fails. Recalling Matai Shang's knowledge of Earth, he deduces that there are therns on Earth. John searches for the medallion for 10 years. One day, his diggers find something, but John John becomes wary of the therns. Soon, John gets sick and dies. Through his journal, John explains that if his body on Earth dies, his copy on Mars dies too. Thus, his odd funeral requests. He tells Edgar that he's the key and suspects the therns will destroy his body. So Edgar rushes to the mausoleum. Edgar struggles to open the door until he remembers that John calls him Ned. He taps the letters on the door and it opens. A thern appears behind Edgar, but they find the mausoleum empty. The thern is shot from behind and John appears. He greets Edgar and explains how he used pufferfish toxin to simulate death. He never found the medallion, but thanks Edgar for bringing him the Thern, who has one. John asks Edgar if he's willing to be his protector, and he accepts. John says goodbye and enters the mausoleum. With medallion in hand, he cites the phrase that returns him to Mars. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.